Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Stormworks. We are back working on our lifting body today. We're starting it off with a little clip that I thought was funny, so I wanted to show you guys. We have our plane, another plane in our plane in the back here, so I uh, thought this was kind of cool, and it kind of gives you guys a, a better sense of scale for how big the inside of this thing really is. So we got our micro fighter that we made for the carrier, and it's loaded up onto the hard point, so we're going to hop in it and see if we can launch it out the back here. I just got to click a couple buttons here, and we're going to see if this works. So it is a little tight. You could see we had a little bit of a wing strike there, but it did work, and we're probably not going to do this, so don't get your hopes up. I mean, if you want when it's done, you probably could do this yourself with a little bit of modification, but I just thought this was funny. It was something I wanted to try out, and uh, I just kind of wanted to show you guys before we get into the building. So... Today we're going to be putting the engines in it and a couple control surfaces and whatnot, and then we're going to try to get it flying. And just real quick too, I'm going to spawn this in and show you guys. I did some landing gear off camera, so these uh, landing gear, they completely fold up. That front gear, it has suspension, it turns, as you guys can see. I'm going to go through how they kind of work real quick before we get into the rest of the building. But you can see we have a double door set up there and they all lock into place with connectors so they shouldn't shake around too much and they actually lock in both positions. So. That's kind of that, that's the front gear. And the rear gear, they don't uh, fold up into a door, but that was just kind of because I was trying to keep the floor space pretty pretty open, if that makes sense. I didn't want to move the space up because in this current setup, we can kind of uh, put cargo containers in here and whatnot. But I'm gonna show, open this door up. You guys can see it's kind of pretty crazy in here. So they're on linear tracks that are on linear tracks, and then they have suspension that is on linear tracks. So a lot of tracks going on here. This does work. Those uh, tracks with the suspension move out to the side and I'll try to show you real quick. Um, but this does work and I this isn't the completed version but it does lock into place as you can see. So it should be good and we've got a lot of wheels back there. So we have three separate bogies each with two wheels and they're the double wheels also. So this thing is gonna be pretty heavy which means we gotta put some pretty massive landing gear on it and that I think will be good enough for what we are trying. To but enough of that. We are going to get into the time lapse. We're going to start building away. We're going to do a little bit of uh, more shaping work on the aircraft itself. And then we'll get some jet engines in here and control surfaces in here. And hopefully we will be flying soon. So before I do that, if you guys like the series, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. You killed it in the first episode. So we will definitely keep more of these coming. And uh, I'm going to quit yapping about and we're going to start building.
All right, well, we got the jet engines in, and uh, they're kind of tucked away in the corner, but that's all right. So we're going to actually power this thing not with the jet thrust, but with some ducted fans, which are relatively overpowered, if you ask me, but I think it'll look cool. I wanted to have a kind of slimmer pro profile on this, so that's one of the main reasons we're doing this. But real quick, I am kind of just working on getting the power piped up to them, so we got to get the power ran over to both fans, and then we're probably going to have to throw some gearboxes on it, but there's... There should be room down here to do that. I'm going to add a clutch, and that's not really usually necessary, but I did mention in the last episode we're going to make this a VTOL, so that is kind of one of the reasons we need a clutch here. We need a way to turn off of the or these fans off, and then we also got to cram a generator back here somewhere, and it's not going to be one of these medium ones that I'm playing with right now. So I thought it was, but we don't need that much power, and also it's going to draw a little bit too much power from the jet engine itself. So we're not going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get this hooked up, but later on we're going to change it to each jet engine is going to have two uh, small generators that are going to be geared pretty high, and that should be enough to run all of our systems. So one of the main things with us doing the two different flight modes is, um, again, we're using the clutches, but really you're not going to be using the throttle as much as you would in a normal plane to control the speed. So you're going to be using the clutches instead. So these jet engines are going to be set up in a way to which basically you're going to crank them all the way up to 100% throttle when you want to fly around. And then you guys can kind of modulate how fast you're going with um, the, the up and down button for the clutch there. And then obviously when you switch over into the flight mode, this one will turn off and the rotors will turn on. So we're going to use some invisible rotors. Um, normally I'm not like a big fan of doing the XML stuff, but you know, there's a, a time and a place for it here and there. And I've actually built a plane similar to this off camera quite a while ago that was using ducted fans. And I just didn't want to go through the headache. So if you didn't really know the, um, the ducted fans, they have a little bit of like a wind up speed. They're, they're not quite like the rotors. So you have a lot less control authority over them than the rotors. And they take a while to kind of change their speed, which makes uh, doing a lot of control systems much harder because you have to kind of deal with the input lag and whatnot. So I didn't want to do that. So we're going to use rotors and it'll make it a lot better to fly overall, a lot more stable. Real quick, I just threw some PIDs together to run our jet engine. So if you guys want to kind of pause that, that PID setup should work for pretty much most jet engines you uh, use. Um, it might not be perfect. I'm sure there's people who have better ones out there, but that's what I do. And I usually stick to those settings for pretty much all of my jet engines. 
So we're going to go up into the cockpit now and we're going to start just kind of slapping buttons around in classic Al form. This is not anywhere near what the cockpit's going to look like. Um, the cockpit's actually going to look really, really cool. It's um, You guys will kind of see it down the road. I'm doing a lot of Lua for this, so it's kind of taken a lot of time behind the scenes and whatnot. But um, it's going to be two seats and there's going to be a pilot, co-pilot, and then there's actually going to be a third seat behind for uh, what is called a RIO or a radar, radar instrument operator. So... Um, Again, we're going to put that giant AWACS dome on it. We're going to put a couple droppable sonars and stuff like that. So the co-pilot will do all the refueling, mid-air refueling. The pilot will fly, and then the Rio will do all the radar stuff and weapons stuff. So I'm also going to just start slapping control surfaces all over this thing. Um, most of these red ones are not going to be the permanent ones. I'm just kind of putting them here to make sure we can get this thing in the air and that it doesn't have any critical uh, flaws in flying before we try to actually put the actual control systems in. So I do that with a lot of my planes just because uh, the balancing of the planes is a little bit more important for how they fly and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what that is. And so if you guys see these giant red control surfaces everywhere, they're not going to be there permanently. I'm just kind of hooking them up to see if we can go on a test flight. So I'm going to get rid of these green blocks. I just had them there for the landing gear so we could test it. And we're going to see if we can get this thing in the air. So um, I'm sure the first try it won't work. So we'll probably have to make some adjustments here or there. I have no clue what we need RPS wise out of the jet engines and all that good stuff. But um, also the uh, looks like they're backwards first of all. So we should probably fix that. But um, also we need to need to fix those landing gear. It was kind of jumping around a lot and I'll do that later on. But uh, just kind of know that for the meantime that the uh, bouncing around and stuff, I'll fix that. It's it's not going to be like that when it's done. Um, the rear landing bogeys kind of have a lot of stuff going on there. So um, as usual, I'm going to try to make it work at all physics details too. So we'll see about that. I know the, <laughs> the low physics usually break the landing gear in this game, which is kind of annoying, but uh, it's just something you kind of got to work around. So I'm going to do my best to make sure it works on all physics. At the very least, you'll be able to fly it in low physics and as long as you take it off um, and high. But Again, it's going to be a VTOL, so you won't really need the landing gear to go fast as long as you can get out of the hangar. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but that's something we'll deal with later. So it looks like we're not getting enough power. I'm going to play with the gearboxes a little bit here. We're going to keep smashing it into the trees and the mountains until we get into the air. And then once I'm happy with it, I'll throw some actual permanent control surfaces back onto the plane.
All right, so we're gonna try our luck at kind of moving these landing gear back. I noticed that we were kind of striking the tail quite a lot when we were trying to take off. So um, we're gonna move that back. Hopefully we can clear the tail a little bit better and it might look a little goofy. Typically landing gear aren't that far back, but this is a, a pretty large, heavy cargo plane and it's got a very flat bottom and it sits low to the ground. So we kind of got to do it. I'm okay with it. I don't think it looks terrible. It's gonna be right under the, the doors on the side, which kind of, it looks a little bit better in my mind, kind of being symmetrical there. It lines up with a lot more stuff, but we're gonna give this another shot. And then I think the next step would be to do uh, is to add some more wings and control surfaces and stuff like that. Um, but for the meantime, I'm just gonna run back there. I wanted to see and make sure uh, that we had enough RPS, which looks like we had plenty. So I think the bigger issue now is that we don't have enough control surfaces. So I'm gonna double these up. I'm gonna throw some more down here and we can kind of easily get around this. Now, I'm, I know I'm using the big ones. It doesn't really make sense. The big ones aren't really that much more efficient than the small ones. So if you guys are building a really big plane, um, the big ones kind of more are more of like an aesthetic choice. So just kind of keep that in mind when you build planes, the small rudders and the small control surfaces usually do uh, a lot more because you can fit a lot more of them. So um, I'm gonna paint these wing blocks purple for now. We're gonna add a couple more of them. So hopefully we can get a little bit more lift and make this thing a little bit lighter. Um, I'm gonna paint them purple just because we're gonna have to do a lot of different stuff on the wings and this is gonna kind of help us mark out what we can and can't get away with. So. Um, I'm gonna prefer not to get rid of these, but ultimately there, some of them are gonna have to go. So we're not gonna be able to have this many, but for now, again, we're just trying to get this thing in the air and make sure it's flying. It's, uh, if I'm being honest, taking me a painful amount of tries to get this into the sky, which is funny, but it's, uh, it's kind of just a process. And so, you know, when you're building your own plane, just kind of understand it's, it's probably not gonna work perfectly the first time. These, these kind of things take a lot of testing. So that is kind of what we're doing right now. And it looks like this is also going to be a failed uh, takeoff attempt. So we're gonna crash into the mountain just like we have. So I'm gonna run back here. I wanna kinda check out on these RPS. It looks like, yeah, 10, 10 is a little bit too low. So we uh, probably should mess around a little bit with that. And what I'm gonna also do here is I'm gonna attach our steering to the uh, landing gear so we can kind of turn and go off the runway and see if we can get off with a little bit more ground, which um, isn't ideal, but again, I'm just trying to see how this thing flies first. So that's kind of what we're up to. I'll feather the throttle a little bit and we're just gonna turn left here and try to go down the runway. So not really down the runway, but not into the mountains, I guess, would be a better way to put it. And look at that, yeah, we're flying and it looks like we're flying pretty well now. So um, obviously we don't really have yaw, and that is kind of what the issue right there was, and we don't have enough thrust. So we, it, since the ducted fans are a little overpowered, um, I would like to be able to kind of push ourselves out of the, that stall right there. I'm gonna make these pids a little bit more sensitive, and then I'm also going to increase the overall throttle that they can go to. So that should hopefully give us a little bit more power and make this thing a lot easier to. All right, so the video's getting a little long here, so I cut out some of the testing. I ended up adding a control surface closer to the nose, and then you guys can see I added a bunch of wing blocks. That's all of the pink stuff. So um, we're flying pretty good. I added a little bit of yaw, and we're gonna see if we can land this thing real quick before we end the video. So it is winter, the runways are a little hard to see, and you can see that the yaw is not working great. But uh, we're gonna see if we can land it over here on the big island and kind of test the landing gear out while we're doing it too. So it's probably not gonna be the prettiest landing, but we will do our best. And man, I, I really wish you could toggle the snow off. I know it's the holidays. Well, at least when I recorded this, it was the holidays, but the, the snow drives me crazy. It makes everything so hard to see. But we're coming on here, you guys can see, this is uh, quite the awful approach, and my yaw is still not really working like I'd like it to, but uh, we're gonna straighten it out last second here, and it, it looks like this should be a pretty salvageable landing, maybe touch down a little too early, and yeah, it looks like that's kinda what happened, but our uh, looks like our landing gear kinda took it fine, and the steering is working, so we're gonna see if we can just kinda send this thing right back into the hangar and not try to take off like it wants to again. So 
that is going to be just about all of the building we do in this episode guys if you made it to the end thank you so much i really appreciate it in the next episode we're going to start kind of prettying those engines up and we're going to add some control surfaces some actual control surfaces not some temporary ones and uh, then we're going to go from there. We're going to start uh, kind of doing the inside and start doing some of the tech and all the fun stuff like that. So um, definitely stick around. Stay tuned for that. We'll keep the oil rig videos coming to you too. But uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.